People have long been anxious about technological development. We're worried that new methods and machines will eliminate the need for our continued employment. And if we're lucky enough to keep our job, we're worried that the new technology will make it worse, either simplifying our tasks so as to stupefy us or overextending the diminished staff. But if the past is our guide, these fears are misplaced. Technological progress also creates jobs, often new ones we could not have ever even imagined. The messenger who traveled by horseback from one town to the next had no idea that one day they'd be replaced by people working a telegraph, who could never imagine they would become switchboard operators and technicians hanging phone lines, who themselves could not imagine becoming the engineers and programmers designing the infrastructure for text messaging. Nevertheless, with each new era of technology come the doomsayers who tell us that this time is different and new technology really is going to put us all out of work. Karl Marx explored these worries in a time after industrialization had taken hold, but before wages really started to rise for working people. Up until 1850 or so, the gains from the Industrial Revolution were being accrued mostly to the middle class the bourgeoisie, as he called them, and not to the workers in the factories. Marx predicted that this trend would continue, placing workers into dehumanizing jobs that paid terribly. He saw how technological change would throw people out of work and thought that competition for jobs from this reserve army of the unemployed would keep wages at the subsistence level. Thankfully, this prediction turned out to be wrong. And as we know today, economic growth was widely shared, benefiting the formerly poor more than anyone else. What this picture is missing is the change in the composition of these two groups. Over this time period, the bourgeoisie, the middle class, grew their ranks by 725%, while the population of workers grew by 734%. Indeed, the rich were getting richer, but the poor were also joining the ranks of the rich. To Marx's dismay, work got less dehumanizing overall, and higher wages gave us greater leisure time and new ways to spend it. The very concept of leisure time was born out of the Industrial Revolution. Most people prior to this period worked on a farm, day and night, for seven days a week, and the rest usually worked out of their home, never with a break. But with wage labor on the rise, people were able to clock out. There was their time that they gave to the company and the time they had for themselves. And people started to use that time to do more fulfilling things. This period saw the birth of sports teams and leagues and eventually professional athletes. It also saw an explosion in art, literature, and the other finer things. But this technological anxiety was nothing new. We heard about it already in the tale of William Lee, whose invention of the stocking frame was denied a patent in 1589 by Queen Elizabeth, who worried it was so good that it would throw too many people out of work. This is not unusual throughout history, where most of our awareness of trade between ancient societies comes from merchant guilds that kept records and who, with force if necessary, ensured that they did not face new competition from technology or from other people. You were to do what you were told. To do otherwise was dishonorable, and the interests of those with power always and everywhere suppressed those seeking to disrupt it with dangerous new ideas. The urge to stop progress is not irrational or unnatural, and we deal with it still today. The economist Joseph Schumpeter called the problem creative destruction. He wrote, The opening up of new markets, foreign or domestic, and the organizational development from the craft shop and factory to such concerns as U.S. steel illustrate the process of industrial mutation that incessantly revolutionizes the economic structure from within, incessantly destroying the old one incessantly creating a new one. This process of creative destruction is the essential fact about capitalism. It is what capitalism consists in and what every capitalist concern has got to live in. 
this new system of industrial capitalism that was emerging with the Industrial Revolution was one that was constantly coming for your job. Indeed, capitalism today is still a system that is constantly trying to eliminate the need for your labor to replace you with better ideas and new technology. That's scary, it's unsettling. And it's hard to assuage those fears with proclamations about how such pessimism has been a poor guide for a few centuries now. We're not wholly comforted by the fact that new jobs will come with those changes and higher paying ones at that. And for most of human history, those fears led us to snuff out invention before it had the chance to make us obsolete. And that, our rhetoric around innovation, is what had to change. 